mental health. Why am I so scared of confrontation? I was afraid to face myself. It was convenient to just lie to myself and lie to others. My brain always likes to self-sabotage or like invent problems that don't exist. If I could turn off that voice, right, my life would, have been, would be so great. Eh? It stresses me out every single day. Guys, if I, my People eyes start like rolling back, means I fainted. <laughs> Sorry. You know what? Let it's time to ask her whether she's okay. <laughs> and in today's episode, we want to focus on mental health. I think it's a topic that is somewhat difficult to talk about. Like, I think for the older people in this cast, which are all of, <laughs> all us, of us, like we've gone through a, a large period of our youth trying to navigate this, right? And I think we have also been quite fortunate to be in a time where this has become a, a, a very key focus for a lot of us. Mm. So, okay, I know I'm rambling already. Wow, that's great self-awareness, which is part of mental health. And we believe that it's time to change the conversation, particularly for our youth, who are facing pressures and challenges that previous generations never had to contend with. Mm. Mm. Agree, agree, agree? Mm. Oh. Yes. Okay, so in this episode, I have actually curated a list of questions. Curator. That we can oh. use. Curator. Wow. Oh. And this list of questions is something that we can use or any of our audience members can use to kind of check in with each other. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, to kind of figure out where you're at. Perhaps over a meal, eh? I'm hinting to something, uh, y'all can get it, uh? without uh? the awkwardness. Because you kind of gamify it. It's like a list of questions. Let's just go through it. Okay. Okay. Lucky so, you haven't eaten at all all day. <laughs> Is this the same group that did the checking in I on think each other? So, thing? so oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So again, we're gonna check <laughs> we in with each other, bad. but this time round, we have we have what McDonald's guys. Oh. <laughs> we're gonna do it over a meal. Yes. Singapore's <laughs> favorite oh. takeout. Thank you, man. What do we have? McDonald's has kindly delivered us our favorite meals. So, shall we? Give it out and then let's start with the question. Okay? Is it a very, surprise? Very nice. I haven't had McDonald's in a long time. Yeah. I'm actually very excited. I actually Same. eat it every week at least three times. Well, how you oh. maintain your weight? Yeah? Oh, what's the <laughs> we spoke about this on, a, on our food hunt episode. Okay. If I had to choose only one food to eat for the rest of my life, it would be fries. Oh, that's, yeah. That's and what you said. Honestly, McDonald's fries. I don't know what kind of magic they, mac magic they put in here. Mm -mm -mm. But goddamn, I think yeah, it's one of the damn. best fries ever. This sauce, right? The guy chili sauce, whenever I go overseas or when I move to Australia for, for a while, right? I carry it like an entire bag of this. Just <laughs> having the food out and we start eating a little bit, right? Like the mood, you got me or not? The mood, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right. Okay, yeah, really let's you. begin with the questions list. Okay, so the cast will take turns to draw a card from the deck and share a recent reflection about their life. But we've all got to print it. <laughs> <laughs> we've all got to turn into cuts. No, we're gonna save the so earth. Instead, um, I will just randomize the, the questions and then mm. we will just answer. Okay? okay? Cool. Okay. So the first question that we want to do is, I think we start easy, okay? What's something small that made you smile this week? How small? <laughs> <laughs> I think I recently went back to painting on my iPad. It's been a long oh. time since mm. I've done that. Recently, I found time, pockets of time to do it. And I remembered how therapeutic, how shock it was to just sit in a corner of the bed and then just start mm. painting. Yeah, I feel like everybody kind of has that thing. Mm. It could be like a spot, like for me it's MMA. It could be painting, it could be something like that, right? or reading or whatever. You need to have that one thing that you go to that really just empties your mind. Decompresses. Uh, yeah. yeah, decompress, decompress. Damn important. So what's yours? MMA. Yeah. But it's not something that you can do like at home at like 8 p.m. Oh, okay. what if you're damn stressed? Shadow oh, box oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. He does this yeah, yeah, every yeah. time. <coughs> so, Shams, when's the next cut? Mine is this week, right? Hmm. On a random night after watching Netflix, I decided like, I feel like dancing. Because we were oh playing, God. me and my fiance were playing Spotify, like just listening to music. So I decided to challenge him. I said like, okay, we play a random song. Then we have a team. Then we have to just like interpretive dance. For context, he also dances, right? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. We, we both like, <laughs> like to dance. Like Ke Thai. No, Ke Thai is singing only. Like <laughs> Yeah, for sure. <laughs> sure. I don't know why it's so good. So interpretive means that you have to follow the lyrics. Like the lyrics say like, yeah. hey dad, look at me. It's like. A bit, a bit. No, no, no that's not, not me. That's just me. No, <laughs> more like interpretive freestyle. Ah. For example, like, because we are a couple who just fought, right? But hmm. we want to make up but don't want. So we are sitting next to each other. <laughs> now I will lie on his shoulder. Then he will like. Oh, oh my God. so like, artistic. You guys should so we must like feel each other's yeah. energy, right? Then we must like try to make up a dance. Yeah, I think we should try. <laughs> one day. 
I cannot lie, I really. Like not on the YouTube channel, like, let's not bore people, but like we tried the, <laughs> the, the Instagram. Then was something small that made you smile this week. <laughs> um, Actually small, like my, my son. I know, I don't wanna, I, I, I feel like it's just gonna be to all be parenthood but examples. The truth. But it really was because he now is in his six month phase, right? So he can, he's now developing relationship with people and objects. So now, right, you know that when he smiles at you, it's not a random smile. He really recognizes Aww. you. So like literally this morning, imagine I'm like sleeping here, okay? Mm. His face is right in front of me and he was just doing this like. <laughs> that was so cute. He's just like tapping me to like wake me up. I woke, wake up to this beaming smile of a little so baby. Cute. And it was just like, wow. Ah, damn sure. Okay. okay. Next question. What's one thing you love about being your age right now? Ooh. Ah. Oh. Easy. Then you go first. Ah. The, how do I put this? Is excess income. I've lived quite independently for a long time, but I had to basically skim. So if I wanted to buy air fryer, to go and buy the cheapest possible one on like Shopee. Mm. But now it's like, I can go and buy like a expensive one and be like, <laughs> I have it. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Being a new homeowner and a new dad, ah, brought it up by anyway. Being a new homeowner and a new dad, it's like there's things that you have to buy every single day. It's like suddenly you need to buy a, I don't know, a washing machine la, or like an air fryer, like I say, or like mm. a new frying pan or whatever. My mentality in 20s is always, how can I get a good deal? Can I find it secondhand? Can, now it's just like, Zara, buy, see the next day. Let's <laughs> go. And I think that's <laughs> the Then you might not for the next day delivery and plus another $5. That's right. Affiliate <laughs> links down below. Okay. Oh my God. Can I re-answer the little small thing, the small thing yeah, that yeah. made me smell this Wait, week? You didn't answer it. Like, yeah. oh, normal fries. And then there's a little pinker oh. cut fry piece inside. It's literally a small thing that made you smell. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> no, isn't this the best feeling? Really? It is. Right. It is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why I don't have It's the little good things, deal. guys. The opposite sucks. When you order crinkle fries, then you <laughs> 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 and I know y'all keep teasing me about my age thing and how I usually just play up the whole I'm very sensitive about age thing, right? You're 33, right? <laughs> sure. Despite that, right, turning 30 soon, I think it gives me like a, a feeling of liberation, oh. yeah, actually. There's no rush. There's no like, oh my God, I must make good connections. I must play hard. I must work hard. I must be something, something, something mm. by 30. So to build off of that, right, mm. I actually found this post that was quite interesting and it's, it's indicating that like, this is what really matters over every decade of life. Ooh. Oh! Yeah. In our teens, what most people think is important is being cool, popular, getting good grades, social media presence. But what is actually important are things like strong family connections, uh, laying groundwork for strong mental health, finding your own identity. Okay. Yeah, and I thought like, if I were a teenager or even in my 20s right, and I see something like this, right, it makes me reflect a little bit about my own life mm. and what am I really focusing on? So- um, Wait, uh, can you wipe your mouth? <laughs> Why? Oh, gonna... So what you think is important in your 20s? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Finding a picture perfect partner, oh. choosing oh, your think. permanent career path mm. and traveling the world. Ah, this is what see? you think is important, so okay? it's not important, but this is what is actually important. And I think it bridges off like, the, the earlier ones also, which is deepening family connections and boundaries, prioritizing mental health, which is something that many people actually neglect. Um, living according to your own values. Mm. I was going to say the, the step before that is actually identifying what your values are. Because I think mm -hmm. even now, I do, actually you ask me what my values are. I, I, I know I have some principles, but I actually can, can't name you like, oh, A, B, C, D, these are my values. True. My therapist actually gave me a technique. Okay. So there are these like charts, right? With a list of values and their descriptions. Right. So the technique to narrowing it down is you identify 10 first. Then you narrow it down to five. Right. Then you see whether you're gonna narrow it down further. And then those are the ones that you strongly resonate with. Most likely those are your core values. You have something to build off of. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, healing right. attachment styles to attract a healthy partner. Mm. There was a period of time I was very into this attachment style thing and uh. like schemas. Which is Wait, like, attachment style is in like the avoidant, yeah. anxious, secure, that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, because okay. I, I know that I am avoidant, but I don't know why. So I, I want to like look into it, like why am I so scared of confrontation, that kind of thing. Mm. So I went in the deep dive, like in my, only in my like, maybe 20, when I was 25 into all these things. And I feel like it really helped lah. But when I was like 21, I keep focusing on like mm. making other people like me. Mm. Mm. Like I keep wanting like, oh, will I impress this guy on a date? Will I seem cool to this person that they want to talk to me? Well, I'm still then there, I realized like I should focus on myself ma. And like like myself first before I go yeah. date other people. Yeah. I, I think one of the biggest struggles for most peop younger people, right? Whether it's, and I think it applies to both relationships as well as like mental health, right? Is that you don't have frameworks. 
and because you don't mm. have frameworks, like what you're talking about, you don't know, you want to focus on yourself, right? Mm. I think a lot of people know that, like go and love yourself first, but they don't know how, mm. they don't know what to focus mm. on. And I yeah. think now obviously with so much like access to all this kind of stuff, right? Frameworks is one of the key things. It kind of guides you, it helps to shape how you can think and what you can think about and show you more linear paths to help you understand yourself better. But that should act like a guide, la, not like a absolute truth. Yeah, the, the worst thing you can do is mm. identify with and then just like, that yeah. is me already. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Next question. What's something that has been on your mind lately? Hmm. I come to realize that every time I'm in a really objectively good place, like when I really do an audit and I tend to do it like maybe once every three months, my brain always likes to self-sabotage or like invent problems that don't exist to always constantly put me in a state of stress. Oh, well, it's an INFP like thing. It's a INFP thing. No, because I also like that. Like yesterday we met Alan Wu, right? <laughs> 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 like maybe something like I like, oh my God, did I offend him or should I have asked him this in this way? Or like, was I too ditzy? You know, it will just keep me up at night. Like, oh my God, what am I doing? Until I sleep at like 5 a.m. that kind of thing. Oh like I'll just stare no. at the ceiling, right? And then just these thoughts like nonstop, blah, 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 blah. Then I have to like watch TikTok, right? Just to shut my mind. Yeah. Honestly, right? If I could turn off that voice, right, mm. my life would have been would be so great. Eh. Yeah. <laughs> really, it stresses me out every mm. single day. Mm. What I do is whenever I catch myself overthinking, right, I will try to do everything. I try to think everything right at face value. So let's say oh, I think I'm not sure if I said this to Alison. Alison today be black face to me. But number one, did she explicitly tell you that she doesn't like you or she doesn't say, don't like something mm. about what you said? No. Yeah. So I shouldn't react to that. Mm. As long as I did my part to communicate well, then I think I'm okay until Alison tells me mm. otherwise. Like but, trust the yeah. facts. Yeah. Yeah. It's actually really facts. good advice because I, I used to suffer from this socially for the longest time. And like, I actually, until I had to Google, like help me. I think oh, my friends hate me. And then Google came Google out with help me. Yeah. I mean like one of the first few like responses <laughs> was like, if no one has told you, don't like, don't believe it's true mm. la, like you're only inventing that in your head. Mm. And I think that's the one thing that, the one mantra I keep repeating and telling mm. myself. I've been using chat GPT, right? Oh. To help me understand my life. To be <laughs> so like a therapist. You're the overthinker here, right? Damn you hardcore, by <laughs> ISDP <laughs> la. So, <laughs> so you get all of us. Wait, it, the free version or must be paid one? Free. Ah, so the free one's so good. Is mm. that an but example? You can ask the prom. So let's say I'm having an interaction with somebody, right? And then I don't know whether I'm being rude. So I will copy the chat. Okay. Put into chat GPT and yeah. then I'll just ask. Is this was I being rude? Yeah. Was I being rude or how could I have communicated this in a healthier way? Wow. And then the the they will reply to me and they'll point out, okay, this person phrased so well. Um you were showing frustration here, but you could have rephrased it to to actually articulate it this way and then you most likely this person will have been more receptive. Holy shit. Yeah, stuff like that. That's so helpful and scary yeah. at the same time. So chat GPT it's also has a lot of biases, yeah, 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 yeah. But this is more of like for you to reflect <clears throat> and think of things that you're otherwise not thinking about. Because sometimes when you are emotional, yeah. you can get caught in your own like mm, your own wet. head. Uh. Yeah. yeah. So this one helps to declutter a bit, it helps you to refocus. And I think a lot of times also is refocusing on problem solving. Yeah, 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 because feelings a lot of times get in the way of being able to 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 resolve things or, or to mm. you know like mm. to think clearly. So this really really helps for me like This has been a recent hack that I've been mm. I've been trying out lah. It's actually really good. Like I think it goes back to something that I mentioned in the previous episode. We talk about the voice in your head, right? The mm. voice in your head is actually not you. It's actually something else that's part of you that's actually talking to you. The mm. you is actually very pure, and so you need to be able to take a step back behind one layer above that voice in your head. Mm. And one hack to be able to do that is to talk to yourself, talk to that voice in a third person. Chat GPT actually might be a good hack because it's very difficult to start going, you, I, who am I speaking to now? Oh, I'm losing, losing track. Just talk to Chat GPT mm. as that third person to g help you gain that perspective mm. also. So I think that's pretty good advice. Recently, like maybe a month ago, I when I was almost going to sleep at about 2 to 3 a.m., right? Then I received, like, I was about to lock my phone. Then I received a text from my friend saying, like, um, I, Alison, are you still up? Then I was like, oh. Then I just replied, hey, what's up? Like, what happened? Then he said, like, he's having an anxiety attack now. Mm -hmm. And, like, he doesn't know what to do. Oh, my God. Then suddenly I was very logical. Like, I took all my knowledge of my 
one to two therapy sessions, right? And I just like, <laughs> talk to him. I feel like when I have an anxiety attack, right? I don't really know what someone can say to me. Yeah, yeah. But then when it happened to my friend, right? I suddenly was very logical. Okay, I teach him this method. Like, it's called like a breathing square. Mm, so mm. basically, you draw a square in your mind or with your fingers. And then with every line, right? You breathe, inhale or exhale. So for example, you draw one line, like you inhale, then you exhale. Mm. inhale and exhale then you just keep repeating la. so it's like a very easy method to calm yourself down then after I said oh are you feeling better I, is your heart rate like lowered then he said yes then that's why I, I prom like can you tell me what happened if you're mm. comfortable like like what what got you thinking like this or like what what do you think about this and things like that la, to prompt him to like express himself good. through that session I also learned that sometimes it you forget to check on your friends. Yeah. Like you, you usually only think about yourself, man. You don't really think about your friends' mental health if they are looking like fine or they seem to be doing well in their job or on social media. Like if you see them go for a concert, right? And then they look very happy. You won't think like they are depressed or, or they are sad in that moment. Man. And then it remind me like, oh my God, I have not checked on this friend um, in a long time. Like, we do meet, but it's always like fun and laughter and we never really talk about very, very like heart to heart things. Mm. So if you do have a chance to like prompt them, like maybe just ask like, oh, how are you? Even though it's like so minute and small talkish, right? It might like open a bigger conversation. Nah. Like you don't want to wait until your friend has like an anxiety attack or is in a dire like mental state, then they reach out to you. Or mm. the worst is like they <clears throat> don't even reach out at all. I think it's a good step and I think you, it's better than not doing it. But like sometimes randomly just asking someone like, hey, you okay? Like I did with you before <laughs> shoot. But it always goes, huh, why? Huh? You know, you know, like mm. everything's okay. Right? And then because maybe you're just catching them in the moment where they're actually really okay. And then that kind of throws you off. Like that makes you kind of not want to ask oh. ever again. Yeah. Yep. But don't let that throw you off. No, which yeah. is why, right? I do think that like this list of questions that we curated. Yeah. I think they are more helpful because they kind of guide you towards mm. specific things that you want to think about. Yeah. Specific areas of your life that you want to kind of like explore. Uh, not only are they about like just talking about like uh, sad stuff, mm. what's troubling you, right? but it's also but very important as all these the questions things. are. Yeah, remind mm. you of good things because a lot of the time, right, it's it's that. Ma. Yeah, yeah. If you, you need to focus on the good things, or only focus on and think about the bad things, right? then you, you, you're not going to get anywhere. You know what I mean? You know what they should do? TV stations mm. or cinema, like, theater operators, right? If you really want to do like a CSR campaign, during the commercial breaks, where it's like usually five minutes long or the ads at the start, right? Instead of selling these ad spots, just put a prompt there for families or for whoever is coming together, right? <laughs> to just have a two minute conversation. Then after that, you watch a horror movie. <laughs> like the person <laughs> about, about to cry <laughs> and then suddenly. <laughs> <laughs> so what made you smile lately? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that is a great ad for the horror movie Smile. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, next question. So it's said that once you hit your 30s, your identity will revolve around one or two hobbies. Do you all think that is true? Oh, yeah. I have this like smaller group of friends where we really talk about like hobbies and shit. Okay. So like in my, in my circle of friends, we have like two that are really obsessed about cycling. We have one that's the grill guy, like grill daddy, loves grilling. <laughs> then randomly one day I just said, hey guys, for those who have now owned their own homes, have you like ever prepared for doomsday? Like just like yeah, yeah. like your your little go back or then they all just went, oh, so this is your identity now. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So I was like, you had like Doom's some- daddy. All my friends was half joking, but half serious was like, then I think you need to decide whether this is going to be your personality for the next 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> I think I struggle with it now more than when I was younger. I feel like when I was younger, I could, safely retreat to a easy identity. Like, Student, uh, dancer right. when I'm still active. Right. Um, like, oh, I'm in uni now. Or I can, I'm an intern. But I feel like once I start working, right, I, I don't really know what to identify as other than an adult, where I retreat to those kind of safety, like student and whatnot, I don't mind because I feel like I see a future for myself and then I can build more, ide better identities for myself next time. You know? Yeah. Or to be something time. like mm. a, a kind, like wife, for example. But then like, as when I grow older, then it's just about my job, like mainly about my job or what role you have or like what um, title you have, right? Then I feel like, Eh, that's just all. Like I cannot, like, I feel so 
constricted. Yeah, but I think like there's, there's a difference between feeling like it's you're being pigeonholed or typecast almost or using it to an, an advantage, I feel. Back when we were students, I felt like the need to brand myself so that I would be known for certain things, just so that you need to stand out in some mm. way. What? So then I remember I would always like play guitar and sing on stage. Then like I became the guitar guy. Then every, every time there's a guitar at the campfire, it's always, hey, then play ah. You know, that kind of thing. <laughs> oh. Then I felt like, okay lah, like I had, I had value to the group. That was important for me to kind of have that identity. And now that I'm in my thirties, like I feel like I stopped seeking hobbies while my friends are all starting new ones. So like my friends who started like cycling, it was only in the last like three, three, mm. two, two, three years, you know? So it's just a proxy, like you really had a bad day and you feel like I have no self-esteem or whatever. It's sometimes nice to know, wait, actually, like my friends really value me because I, I contribute this to the group in that sense, at least for mm. me. Like. Mm. Something that I have struggled with for a very, very long time, right? Is actually honesty. Okay. Like an honesty with myself. I've always felt that it was convenient to just lie to myself and lie to others just because I could get away with it. I was afraid to face myself. I still am. Yeah, and I think that is something that's very, very difficult, but the faster you are able to become extremely honest with yourself, right? The faster you can, I think, learn to live. Mm. Yeah, and learn to live like a, a, like a real life, an authentic life. You're able can, to- Can you share like yeah. an example? Yeah. Okay. Like I'm not sure what you're like the rough category yeah, of yeah. what you're lying to yourself about. Um, I think there have been like instances in my life where I've recounted um, like past events, but I've actually distorted the truth greatly. Just mm. because like, I was like, there are, for example, there, there are components of shame. There are components of like, it's just like mistakes that I don't want to acknowledge. Mm. Yeah. And then after being called out, right, then I really need to like process in order to understand that like, what's wrong? Like, mm. why am I avoiding that? Why don't I want to address that kind of stuff? Well, that's that's very heavy and deep. Huh? Mm. Thank you, McDonald. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> as a cause, I think, I think everyone can relate because I, I'm sure we all make mistakes in our lives that we don't even want to talk about again. Mm. Then we just like, like just think that if we don't talk about it, it won't be true. The bad part about that is when you hold it in for too long, right? Because you haven't like closed that chapter. Yeah. Like you never acknowledge the shame of that chapter and you never acknowledge the mistake, right? When it piles up, right? Slowly and you don't realize it until one day it bursts, right? In your face, right? <laughs> when it suddenly pops in your face, right? <laughs> then it will be a very jarring thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I think everybody want to run away from a problem, sure. But then when you let it roll down the hill, right? It will get bigger, bigger, like your sand bomb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How about personally when you all when you do check-ins? Are there any specific things you all do in your check-ins? When I meet my friends for a check-in, right? Mm. I, we will always ask each other, do you want advice or do you want to dump? Before that, right? Do you all know that you're all meeting for a check-in? Yes, like catch-up. So it's like, like a daily catch-up. There's a, there's a chat group and it's like, guys, I need a catch-up. Then everyone know we are going into heart-to-heart -heart mode. We created a space where it's very chill and very open to talk about mental health. And I got this friend who likes to end the session with a hug. Mm. Like, cause she's very like she's physical contact physical love kind. The, uh, mm. So we just end with a hug now, but okay. Why <laughs> is Alyssa this not hugs comfortable? Like, like, oh, no, <laughs> not that I'm not comfortable, but I don't offer hugs like, like at the top of my mind, like, oh my God, I wanna hug you, that kind of okay, thing. But okay. she's that kind of person. I used to be someone who always like, was a big hugger. Until Same. there was one incident, right? That just scarred me for life. What? I basically knew somebody who, um, I went to uni in Australia and she was someone that I was friends with in class. Uh, it was like my last semester already. And then I randomly saw her at the mall. And I just went, Oh my God, hi, it's so, it's so good to see you. Like it's been so long. And she's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So she's enthusiastic or still. Yeah. But I didn't realize that she's just not a hugger. Oh, that's just like that. So like, I literally just went like, hey, it's good to see you. And then I'm leaning in and then she's just like turning away. <laughs> and then I meet, so I don't know, like it's too late to back out. Oh, so I literally just hug a person like this <laughs> to turn away. Like, like you turn oh. behind, I'm like hugging like this. Uh, and then no. you go kiss the back of my head. <laughs> you might as well already right at this point. <laughs> it was so awkward. Yep. And then I like, yep, by, like, like I faster just got yeah. the, Oh, then, and from then on, I never ever <laughs> open my arms out for hugs anymore. I just, I yeah. wait first. So how you reach the, the angle where you cannot recover easily. Correct. If it's still like that, you can like, woo. And I was way taller than her. <laughs> like, hey. But then he's already at no. the bending yeah. stage. I, then maybe he can just like. 
yeah, yeah. What's up? He was exactly that because he was like short. So, so I'm like, I'm literally like this. Yeah, this is oh, no. the part. No, you yeah. don't. Like this. Yo. This <laughs> is <laughs> <laughs> You can do a front flip. La. <laughs> Next to her. <laughs> okay, guys. It's time for painting of the episode. episode. So today we have a painting by... Wesley Sia. It's absolutely beautiful. And it's called Rooster. Honestly, right? Like it's so underrated. I know a lot of people look at it like, hey, very simple, right? But it's all about the negative space and you'll be even more impressed if you hear about yes. his condition. He's actually blind on one eye and has limitation on the other eye. It's so it's amazing. really quite crazy. This is my favorite painting that ah. I've seen so far yeah. on the show, yeah. It reminds me of those porcelain bowls that has a rooster on it. Yes. And if you want to get paintings like this, mm. a meaningful artwork for your home, you can join us on... 19th of October. October at Tempani's Hub. Correct. We'll be there and we will love to see you there. Yeah. Not your Tempani's Hub. My our Tempani's Hub. Hub. Let's go. And I think we've kind of come to the end of the episode for today. We hope that the stuff that we've been able to share is of use to you guys. And I think one thing that is, I guess, a little bit of a challenge mm. um, is that how do you initiate a check-in? Like, let's say if you don't have people yeah. around you, right, kind of stuff, right? Yeah. Send them this video, guys. Oh. Start with this video. And yeah. the checklist, we will paste below. So the questions, you all can go and ask. And also, of course, a big thank you to McDonald's for this delicious meal Beautiful. and creating an opportunity for us to have this get-together. Thank you, hey, McDonald's. Thank you so much. McDonald's actually has a new song that they just released uh, called Lovin' Me. Okay. So Not go it. and check it out, okay? I think the link will be in the description box below. McDonald's actually also has a youth mental wellness pitch. Wow, okay. Oh, I didn't even know. But you can check it out here. It's right here right now. Um, if you don't know where to get started. Oh, okay, so it's here. So like, or these videos are like, hey, both again. Hey, yeah. hey, let's go. Uh, if not, like, share, subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next one. Adios, muchachos. <laughs> Adios, <laughs> muchachos. <laughs> You ever use your hand, right? Then you wipe on yes, the water. Yes, it's like you wash, right? You have to, what? What are you talking about? <laughs> All the time. Then you share the cup with your friend, then you like... <laughs> no, my pet peeve, right, is when I go eat with my friend, then they go use my cup to wipe their hand. <laughs> wow. That's a <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that was a <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>